Hi, I'm Heinbach. It's good to have you back. As we move into the second year of this pandemic, I miss going out. The Berlin clubs have all been closed for quite some time. I've started making dance music here in my studio, so at least I can dance on my own. During the process of recording, I started re-evaluating a few things in my studio that I had thought as a given. And that is recording to tape. And it made me realize I have talked about experimental tape techniques a great deal here on this channel, but never so much about tape as just a recording medium and the benefits and disadvantages that it brings. So in this video we'll be looking at recording to magnetic tape for electronic dance music, or at least my interpretation of that. I recorded three tracks both digitally and through tape and we're going to listen to the different versions. You have to bear in mind that this is very much my chain, my process, yeah, and this Telefunken M15 that's even rarer than the M15A version that's usually seen around studios and German broadcast stations. First we get a look at the whole signal chain. All the music is recorded live through a Ramsa VRS4424 desk. I mix into a bunch of outboard equipment. The Buck brand stereo compressor. This is a beautiful compressor that's very easy to dial in. You don't get any decibel readings here, which is the major downside of it, so you just have to do everything by ear. I like to run it so it just adds a bit of pump in parallel compression mode. So I have both the dry signal and the affected signal. The next unit I employ is a Hoof Dynamic Master. This is a broadcast limiter compressor that is absolutely transparent in taking off a few decibels and adding intensity to a signal. Just takes off one or two decibels to yeah, make everything more glued together. Next up in line is a Klein & Hummel UE400 equalizer. Again, a broadcast tool and I use this to add a bit of oomph on the 60Hz band, add a bit of brightness. Usually I try to fix everything on the EQs on the channel, but sometimes the more surgical precision of this EQ can be helpful. All the effects are on the master bus insert and the mixing board in the end goes both to a Telefunken M15 tape machine and it goes to an RMA UFX2. The nice thing is I'm monitoring the tape out via Hinterband Kontrolle so I can hear how it sounds on tape and can compare that to the straight up signal from the mixer. This is something that's very important because I need to figure out always the exact level on which to hit the tape. That is because the M15 has a sweet spot where you're just giving it enough gain so it sounds great and it doesn't clip too much because you can clip this machine in ugly ways. I had to completely redo mixes and that means the performance because I messed up the gain structure. So right now it's also very handy to have the digital recording at any time as a backup because in the end what will rule always is the performance over the sound. Now why did I choose the Telefunken M15 as my master recorder? Well, that's easy. It was a gift. I got this from a theater where it was decommissioned. It was sitting around for 10 years in the back of the workshop in the Opera House. The sound technician I worked with at the theater knew I loved tape and thought this machine is just yeah, dying here and we can't resell it. Do you want it? And I said, of course. So I drove this all the way here, had it checked out and fixed up professionally but it's been in use ever since. The tape that I'm using is SM468 because this is what this machine has always run with and was always measured to. It is professional tape that's made for durability and I learned about that uh, during my destruction loops because it's near indestructible. But of course it's not a half inch, one inch or two inch tape which would give you a lot more headroom. It's a quarter inch and that's a good cost effective way right now for me to record. Especially since the machine was free except for the, yeah, the maintenance money that I have to invest every time. Let's listen to three different tracks. And I'm going to be switching between the tape and the digital. But I'm only going to tell you in the end which was which. Just so you don't go with pre-assumptions about sound into this. I've tried to match the levels as best as I could, both with meters and by ears, with the ears being the final decision maker. Because of course there's a difference in perceived loudness as the tape will compress a bit when it's run this hot.
you had trouble hearing any difference, it is quite subtle. I myself was surprised by that, because the effect used to be much more pronounced. But since I upgraded my mixer and my signal chain, it's gotten less. But it is still there. Before I reveal which is which, some general observations. You might have noticed there isn't too much tapers. This is due to a bunch of reasons. First, it is a professional machine that was meant to be quiet. And I'm running it at 38 centimeters per second, which is 15 inches for you Imperials out there. And that's one of the highest speeds you can run these machines at. And the tape effect would be more noticeable if I run it at a lower speed, because then the preamps have to work harder, but I would get more noise. The second reason is gain structure. I set it to the aforementioned sweet spot, where I get just the right amount of tape compression and the least noise. The third reason is the recording is already quite noisy because my Juno 60, which I use prominently here, is pretty noisy as are many of the other machines that are employed here. And the board itself has a noise level. And the fourth reason is the secret weapon of all audio production, Isotope RX. I use this to clean up tape noise in general, I just attenuate it a bit. And on two of the tracks, I did just that. So the noise wouldn't be the main thing that gives away the sound of tape. Now let's get to the results. Track A was always the tape track and track B was the digital one. Now I've got a bunch of opinions which one I prefer, but I'm really curious to hear what you think. So please leave a note in the comments which one you liked in which format, because I think there is not a clear cut answer always. What I personally love about the tape sound are three things. Imaging is the first one. I feel the mix is more three-dimensional. It's just a nudge, but I'm just a little bit more inside the music when I listen to the tape version. The second is EQ on the bass. For some reason, the kick drum moves from being here to here. So it has more of a punch here and that's yeah, where it really starts knocking. If I can get a physical reaction where a certain instrument resonates, that's worth a lot, a lot, a lot of time. And this machine does that by default. So everything in the lower region gets a bit more seated well. It does cut quite a bit of lower bass, but I found out that it translates much better to any system that way. Getting the bass region right is one of the hardest things when you're not listening through stuff through a big PA. If I want more bass, I run the machine at 19 centimeters per second or 7.5 IPS. At that speed, it's specifically tuned to get a heavier bass response. Maybe I'll show that to you in a later video, but all the tracks that I recorded now are at the higher speed. The third reason is mid-range attenuation. There is some more exciting mid-range in the digital and it's like ah, 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 but that's also a bit sharper. So that might be transients. And for some reason it doesn't feel as smooth as on the tape. So snare drums on the digital, I tend to blink when they come in. <laughs> and on the analog recording, on the magnetic tape recording, I don't. I think it just adds a nice round EQ curve to the whole mix. The tape recording sounds more finished. And that is something that I've noticed for a long time, that everything that I have recorded onto the tape machine won't go through any revisions. For example, when I'm working in the theater, it's usually accepted as what it is, while the digital recordings, that tend to be more asks for like, rework this, rework this. There's just this thing of, okay, this is something that's done, which is nice because it makes my job so much easier because revisions as anyone who's ever worked in any form of media can be such a pain. And yeah, this process helps me avoid that. But that also has its downside. It can sound too finished. In my work, for example, with Martin Stehr, where we recorded test equipment and guitar together, we choose the digital recording because he felt there wasn't enough space anymore to play. There's just, yeah, it just too closed up in a way. It becomes really hard to add something and make that stick 
with the tape recording. As I said in the beginning, this is all very peculiar to my way of making music, my signal chain, my tape machine, my even my converters. So your experiences may vary. You might have access to different tape machines, be they higher in quality or lower in quality. So there the results will also vary. And I'm happy to hear about your experience down in the comments. I'm going to be working on more music like this for 2021 and hopefully I'll put this out at the end of the year. But if you're on my Patreon, you get one of these tracks right now. And thanks to everybody who supports what I do there. You're the reason I can keep on making these videos. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.